Welcome to Talking Cybersecurity with HMS Industrial Networks. Hi, my name is Jason Block with HMS Industrial Networks. I am the Solution Manager for our Industrial Internet of Things products, and today I will be discussing network segregation and how that can be used to protect your IT networks and remote connectivity applications. So the first thing I want to do is take and cure a couple of misconceptions about remote connectivity. Uh, one of the first misconceptions is that to enable remote connectivity that you need to actually change settings within a firewall to allow inbound connections or inbound connectivity to get to the remote device. It's not actually true. Many of the solutions that are out there actually use available outbound ports that are used for normal internet browsing activity to connect up to servers and applications. So that's the first thing, the misconception I want to cure there. The second misconception I want to cover is that um, enabling remote connectivity allows third-party actors or people outside of your facility to actually access your IT networks. And this is not true. In fact, many solutions that provide remote connectivity enable what is called network segregation, which is going to be the core uh, topic that we're going to discuss today. So I want to cover, cover that there. And network segregation, which is intrinsic to these technologies, actually provides degrees of protection between the user that needs to interface with a, with a remote piece of equipment and your IT networks. So to discuss this, we want to talk about the overall system architecture of a remote connectivity solution. That usually involves the user who has their, their PC that they want to be able to connect up to some type of remote asset. We'll call this the host. In this case, we're actually talking about a machine on a factory floor. But this is the remote host that needs connection. So we need to connect up the user to the host. To enable this, we need to connect through essentially a cloud solution which serves as and hosts the VPN server, which serves as the broker or the, the manager for connectivity between the user and the host. Um, so that, that's kind of the central part of the architecture. Then we have essentially a router, which exists down at the machine level, which is negotiating between the local network of the, the host that we need to connect to and the cloud itself. So the user and the router serve essentially as clients to the cloud server environment. So that's an architectural discussion. So let's talk about the dynamics and what happens when a remote connection is made. So first off, the user running on their PC is connected to some form of internet connected network. So their IT network. So this could exist on basically, let's call it an IP address of a range of 10.20.16.xxx. This is their internet enabled sub network at the user level. So they're assigned an IP address typically over DHCP. So let's say in this case, 10.20.16.201. Additionally, within the, the, the host environment down here on the plant floor, this router also needs to connect up to some form of internet connected uh, network. So let's say this is the plant IT network. And this is functioning on a different subnet, 10.12.15.xxx. And then it is assigned a IP address with DACP, say 10.12.15.101. So these two devices exist on two different subnetworks uh, in this environment. Both of these are internet connected environments. So in this case, the router uses an outbound connection, typically over ports 443 or 1194. 443 is the secure HTTP port. Uh, 1194 is used for, uh, for example, like uh, open VPN type applications there. That's normal port that's used there. So this is connected over completely outbound ports that connect up to the cloud on that side. Additionally, the user connecting over their IP, uh, their IT network is connecting over basically an outbound connection as well. So no inbound connections are needed on either site, coming back to what I was discussing earlier in terms of basically firewall manipulation. So these are done completely over outbound connections. So when the user wants to connect to the host, it initiates a connection request to the server that exists in between. The server, once again, as I was mentioned, is serving as the broker. The router is listening for requests for connection at that case. So when that occurs, the VPN server negotiates a connection to the router and also the user and assigns both of them as clients uh, IP addresses on a completely different subnetwork away from both the IT network and also the user's IT network. So both at the, the plant level and the user level. So those are issued with basically two completely separate IP subnetworks for both of those. So that places the device 
and the user from a, basically a VPN server level on the same, same subnetwork, separated by a degree of separation away from the IT networks on both sides. So in that case, that, that creates a connection between the, the client and the cloud. However, if I look at basically my machine environment here, this exists on a completely different LAN. So in this case, let's say 172.20.12.xxx. This is my host environment of IP addresses that exist on my machine here. So what happens then is the third step in this is that um, the, the IP addresses are issued on for the user PC on the same subnetwork as the machine. And then the router routes those communications between the LAN and the, the connection up to the VPN cloud. All of this is occurring over SSL, TLS encrypted communications. So essentially what I've created here is I've created a virtual IP address that virtualizes this PC down here on this LAN at this machine level. But I have two degrees of separation away from my IT network here. So once again, this enables the user to connect to the host without any kind of exposure to the IT network. And this is what network segregation is. And this is how it helps protect your IT networks at your plant level from and, and keep basically applications isolated to the host network. Thank you for listening uh, and I appreciate your uh, time today.